Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're working on an HP Photosmart 5520 that it's making a grinding noise uh, uh, while operating and uh, that can cause even a paper jam or some errors that renders the printer like impossible to use anymore. So I will show you what these, uh, um, what this defect that I'm talking about is and uh, I want even to tell you that I wanted to make this repair for quite some time. Uh, I wanted to know how to repair this printer for uh, quite some time and I didn't. And uh, I have found a lot of these printers with these defects. And uh, still, this is the first time that I am attempting this repair and uh, I, have, uh, I have this printer here. Uh, just to try to make this repair and to make this video. I, this is not my personal printer, I have uh, uh, Kyocera Ecosys M6530 CDN, so I have no use for this printer, I just wanted to make this video. So let me show you, I will open up the cover just to uh, show you the defect. Now, from here you should be able to see the defect that I'm talking about. Now we'll close the cover, and by the way, to bypass the switch, you just need to take a piece of cardboard or anything and put it in this slot right here, and bam, you bypassed this switch. Now, have a look at down there, yeah, that is uh, the cleaning pad. Okay, now it's, uh, you can see it's jamming to the rear and it's grinding when it reaches the rear. If it grinds at this point, let me show you. Now it goes to the rear. Now it goes to the front. In this case, it's jamming on the rear. If it jumps on the front, it will grind when it reaches the front side. And uh, I mean, it's uh, the same issue, but uh, if you jumps on the rear, I think it's uh, a bit more difficult to deal with. Uh, anyway, I will show you now how to deal with this. So let's power the printer off, then disconnect the power completely. Then we need to disassemble and tear down this printer. So, first, I really advise you to stick some uh, um, some tape, some adhesive tape uh, on the scanner unit to block the cover in place. Because now, that's not a problem, but uh, now I'm taking a flat blade screwdriver and the jamming inside of, uh, the, of this part of the scanner to release it completely and to open it at 90 degrees. If I don't have this tape here, the cover, the scanner cover will open and smash everything that I have behind me now, right now and uh, those are my uh, two monitors and that is not great, so yeah. Now you need to take uh, uh, um, your fingers and uh, behind the, the, the LCD display there are three tabs that I will show you one, uh, when I remove uh, the front panel and uh, you just basically need to release uh, two of them this side and the top or this side and the top while you, you can feel them to the back while pulling on the panel so let me show you okay and the top and then it comes loose uh, behind here there's a flat cable you can see it's a flat cable you can just pull it out and it disconnects and here we have the three clips, one is here, the top and the left, so these two and this. And you can just reach uh, to the back with the finger and uh, bend it and pull it on the LCD to disconnect it. Now, you need a Torx T10 screwdriver and remove a lot of screws. So, you need to remove these two, this, this, 
these two and these two and also there's a sticker behind this sticker so let's remove the the sticker you don't don't need to remove it completely just uh, a part of the sticker in order to remove uh, the screw okay then remove all the other screws okay and with all the screws removed we can lift up and remove uh, the top cover uh, paying attention to that flat cable that we disconnected before okay so here we are inside of the printer and it's a uh, pretty familiar sight for me because I worked on so many of these but uh, if you don't well I will guide you through all that you have to know so first of all remove the duplexer unit cover then uh, we need to uh, disconnect and well unlock the carriage because you know that now the carriage is locked to unlock the carriage you can see that there's a black gear on this side you have to turn it towards the uh, rear of the machine until it blocks or it grinds anyway and uh, here we have uh, the carriage unlocked okay so at this point we need to disconnect some cables and remove some screws we'll be able to remove this assembly okay first of all you need to remove uh, this screw right here and this is the only different screw from uh, all the screws that you will encounter because uh, the other screws have uh, a pitch uh, to the, um, the, um, the thread that is different so this is the only different screw you will have to track down okay so now you need to remove uh, this screw over here Then there are two screws at this side, one is here and one is here. Okay, we're getting close. So now we need to disconnect some things. Uh, first of all, we can remove all this uh, assembly of uh, uh, ribbon cables just need to pull it up and uh, at the same time pull back these latches and uh, will come loose and then we can pull these flat cables from uh, the main board okay and now it's disconnected now we need to uh, carefully remove uh, the uh, carriage unit but before of that we need to do one last thing you can see here there's this switch is a air switch you have to push down on this part and disconnect it and remove it from here so now we have to lift up gently and remove it remove this part now, with this partially removed, there's better access to that this cable that we need to remove. And that is the cable for uh, the CR, the carriage movement on the carriage unit. When you remove the carriage unit and you put it to one side to store it correctly, uh, be sure that nothing touches the printhead area right here this part aside of being very very dirty doesn't have to touch anything because if it touches we can actually damage the printhead so let's take it to one side okay so now uh, we are going to work on the messiest part of the printer so you're welcome uh, you can see here that there's a hole um, the last uh, person that had had this printer just uh, cut a hole to the lower part of the printer to hopefully f try to uh, fix the problem or see what the problem is but yeah I will cover that part in some ways anyway at this point we need to remove uh, one screw over here 
Then uh, we need to uh, pull on this lever and uh, rotate the gear to the front of the machine, the black gear that I showed you earlier. Okay, then disconnect this part and disconnect this conduit from uh, the bottom. Okay, and with this conduit disconnected, we can remove a screw that is behind the pump right here. And it's pretty difficult to reach, and in fact, it's easier if you remove this conduit from here too before accessing that screw. Okay. And that screw is removed, and now we can remove uh, the pump and everything else. So let's just. Oh no, forgot to screw. I'm sorry. Okay, now we can remove the pump assembly. If it doesn't come out, it's easier if you just get this back without jamming anything and yeah comes right out this is the pump the pump also clogs on these printers and uh, that's the cause if your printer uh, doesn't uh, print black after doing several cleaning cycles and cleaning the printer man the print type manually etc so now we need to remove this screw and remove uh, this part of the printer and I really suggest you to use some some pliers because this is messy I uh, cleaned this pad, well I replaced this pad before uh, making this video because uh, that, that that is really messy so in order to disconnect this part that we want to remove, we can push it on the back and then up. But before of that, I want to show you something. If your problem uh, with this printer is that uh, it goes to the front and then grinds to the front, it's way easier than it uh, than repairing the the problem when it goes to the back and grinds. If it goes to the front and grinds to that position, you can just uh, uh, remove a uh, few screws, we'll show you. Uh, you have to remove uh, this, then this, and this. And uh, to the other side, you have to remove uh, this screw over here. And remove this plastic part. Now, after you have done this, you can see that uh, it's pretty difficult to see actually. Okay, hopefully uh, uh, you can see better now. Uh, focus on this part right here. If I move this part, it goes in this direction and then hits on this plastic part. So the printer, in order to understand uh, where this part is located inside of the printer, just feels the amount of torque of the motor. So if I just take a nut or something like a plastic spacer or anything like that and stick it on this side, like uh, stick it on here, on this side of this plastic part, the, this unit will stop before reaching this part where it will grind, it will stop like so, like so. and so uh, it won't grind anymore because uh, it's not running on uh, the damaged teeth. Uh, I will show you an image. Uh, this problem really occurs when uh, the, um, the teeth, this teeth, on this side and this side are damaged and they are not completely damaged only the surface of them are damaged so when they reach a certain part they grind but if you can find a way to stop the movement on this part before uh, the gear uh, goes on this part of the teeth well it works I mean 
you just avoid to uh, run your uh, uh, gear to the damaged teeth. So that cannot uh, be performed at the other way around. So if uh, the printer grinds when it reaches the back, well, that's a problem because uh, to the back side we have some different things. We have this part over here. You can see that it actuates when the uh, unit is totally to the back. And that is the paper loading mechanism. Also, we have this part. This part is the part that uh, releases the tension to the paper separation pad. And uh, if that, uh, the cleaning unit, uh, cannot go totally to the back side, well, it will not engage, and that is a problem. So we cannot use that strategy to fix when it grinds to the back. And uh, that is pretty bad because that would, would have been so much easier. So let me show you what to do in that case. So just get this to the back and uh, pull it out. Okay. So now we can take the printer away because we're going to work on that cleaning pad that we just removed. Okay, my solution to this problem would be to rise uh, just a tiny bit the cleaning unit so that the gear will actually grab onto the remaining part of these teeth. Uh, let me show you. Uh, okay, so on the lower side you can see here that there are, there's a track that goes to all this part of the of the, um, the cleaning pad and uh, this rail uh, if we can just take something inside here to rise uh, the height of uh, the um, of the pad I think it should work I'm not sure of course but uh, I think it should work so let me try something okay first I want to spray some glass cleaner inside of here, inside of the track, and to onto a paper towel. Then I will take a flat blade screwdriver and uh, use this to clean every sort of grease and grime and ink buildup that is on this track. Only the lower part, because if we have grease on this side, it's not a problem. I mean, we're working on this side because we want to rise this side of the of the units. So now I think it's pretty clean. So now we can do something. We can take some JB Weld and mix it on this side of the working bench. Just a tiny bit, we don't need too much of course. So I really love this stuff. I mean I'm from Italy so we don't have JB Weld here, but uh, I had to import it from the USA because this stuff is so good. It sticks so good to everything, so it's very, very good stuff. Anyway, let's mix it. Okay, and uh, what I want to do now is uh, get a thin layer of JB Weld on that truck so that when uh, uh, the, tr the, the cleaning pad will slide on this part it will be raised just a tiny bit. I hope it will not uh, jam but I think we will see how this goes. Okay, now the problem in using something like JB Weld to create this uh, part is that uh, I don't have, uh, well, I, I have JB Weld even on the sides and I should not. So let me try to remove some of the stuff to onto the sides. Okay, after much time and uh, much pain, I have created a little rail that you can see this part is a little bit taller than the rest, 
Yeah, made even a little uh, slide to that you can jump onto this part and uh, I hope it will work because uh, as I said I have lost too much time on this part and uh, well see you in a uh, few seconds 24 hours to cure the epoxy for me okay it's not 24 hours but I, I feel that uh, the epoxy that I that I put on on this pad has cured and uh, as you can see this is the, um, the little slot that I made and uh, yeah it's totally hard now so I can just insert it this back so to insert this back we need to get this on the back and uh, on the right side first then drop it inside here and then pay close attention to this part over here you can see it has to enter inside let me see if I can show you better with some light okay that and that is the paper pickup system so now we can lower this and as you can see now it's working it's engaging totally fine and this is inserted again okay so now we can rotate the printer to a uh, position more comfortable to me to work on and uh, we can get the purge pump back installed so to do this we need to get this pad to the back like so then we need to get this, this tubing to the front and then drop the pump inside here like so then we need to to manipulate it in position you remember that screw hole has to line up and uh, the gear holes here on this side have to line up correctly and uh, yeah if everything goes to plan should be able to insert it and now you can see this is lined up and that on the back is lined up all the conduits and the tubes are not kinked or uh, punched in any way so that's fine now we can uh, get the two screws back for the purge pump first one and the other one on the back So now that we have done this, we can actually reconnect these four tubings, these four conduits of uh, the cleaning pad to the purge pump. So they just need to be friction fitted, inserted in this white holder and uh, will be fine. Okay, then uh, we flip this over and uh, slide it inside here. Now you have to see that these tubings pass through here carefully. Then we get a screw and uh, we get the screw in position. Okay, and uh, this is in position. We can see that now it's uh, it's working so you can see that the unit moves and uh, if I go here and uh, try to force it it doesn't grind anymore and uh, it doesn't engage if I disengage the lever so yeah everything is fine for that so now we need to get uh, the, these tubes back installed so we just need to get this little dirty plastic part and uh, install it on here so this longer tube needs to go first because it has to pass through 
here, this slot, this slot here and gets installed inside here. It's a bit tricky because sometimes when you get it in a single slot it disconnects from the others and uh, just be sure that it's not kinked or uh, blocked in any way. Then uh, this goes right inside here then on this holder this slot and this slot. Okay, the, this here it's too much uh, kink to turn down 90 degrees so it's not good so I will just uh, Okay, that is correct. Great, so now we can reinstall this part that I showed, that I removed to show you how to fix the problem when uh, you have uh, the unit blocked to the front and uh, just need to line it up and uh, insert the screws. Okay, so now we can uh, get the print head carriage back installed. So the print head carriage, in order to reconnect it properly, you just need to place this part here and place the carriage so that uh, the bottom side of the print head is not touching any of the plastics of the machine. And that because we need to reconnect uh, the motor, this cable, we have to route it inside here and uh, it's easier to do it when uh, the carriage is not actually installed. So we just reconnect it. Okay, now we need to pass this part of the carriage uh, at the lower side of this bracket, so just need to do something like this. Okay, and then you can drop it in position. You have uh, some alignment plastic pegs. Okay, just be sure that this is not under the carriage. And so now we can uh, get some screws back. Remember, this screw is different from the others. Okay, so now that we have done this, we can reconnect this part. You have to slide it from the upper side so that it enters in 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 position like so, then the lower parts and uh, click in position. Okay, so now we need to get uh, this uh, cable holder in position. So, something like so. Align it uh, here, but before of that, actually, let me connect the flat cables because it's way easier to connect the flat cables when that part is uh, not connected. So let's connect the flat cables. Okay, so this you just press them in position. Just need to be sure that they are aligned before pressing them in position. Okay. Then we can uh, reinsert it the brackets, okay. And uh, we're getting close, we're getting close to have this printer fixed. At this point we can actually take the duplexer cover on. And then we can connect the LCD panel and uh, start the printer up and see if it works correctly because Actually, everything is connected now. We just need to get the the upper uh, top cover in place, but we don't need that to test. So let's take a piece of cardboard, insert it here, and actually before that, let me just lock the printhead in position because uh, often when this printer 
uh, detects that the print head is not in position, it will start a cleaning cycle and uh, that is not really not good because it wastes a lot of ink and also because these cartridges are uh, I think completely empty and uh, running a cleaning cycle when uh, you don't have ink in the cartridges it's pretty bad. I don't think this wood printer will ever uh, will print now because uh, yeah I mean uh, I didn't clean the print head, I didn't do anything to the print head, so I'm not expecting it, this to print. Uh, the video is about to stop that grinding noise, so let's see if it works. Okay, let's open it up. Let's close it and see if it grinds on the same spot or it's fixed. It's totally fixed, yeah. Okay, now that we've seen that the printer is working fine, we can close the uh, top cover, get the, the top cover in position, and uh, just complete this video. So, disconnect the power plug. That is very important because before you remove uh, the LCD panel. Then uh, you need to get uh, the top cover and uh, well remove our cardboard sensor thing place it on the top and uh, get this flat cable inserted in the left slot that is very important because if you insert it in the right slot uh, it will bend and uh, possibly even break because it's not the correct slot this needs to come out in the left slot because when you insert it in the panel and connect the panel it will connect it like so in entering in the in the right slot so yeah so uh, let's uh, connect a few screws don't forget the one behind the sticker then we need to reconnect the, the hinge of the scanner unit you just press it in position then you get the LCD panel and reconnect the flat cable then insert the LCD panel this way inside then push it in position and it should click in position okay we can now check that uh, everything is okay. Actually, let me place the cardboard sensor stop. And our fix worked. Yeah, and I'm very happy for this because I wanted to make this repair for a long time and uh, I didn't know how to to fix this issue. Now I do. Uh, it's not the best fix ever. I mean, just taking some epoxy to create a little a little slot for uh, in order for the cleaning pad to stay a little bit up and engage with the uh, the gear teeth a little bit better it's not the best thing but I mean the correct way of fixing this of course would be to just replace the whole cleaning pad assembly but uh, remember that HP is uh, one of the really bad companies in the right to repair and they don't provide parts to anyone so that's the problem I mean I would like to to just make a video and uh, tell you that uh, yeah you need to replace that part but uh, there there's nowhere to find that uh, specific part so um, I hope you found this video useful I just got this printer just to make this video 
So I hope that uh, I uh, I've done a, a good job showing you how to fix this issue on these printers. So thank you. If you want to see more videos about printers repair, I have a lot of videos on this channel. I even have a, a playlist where I show uh, just the repair videos in English because uh, my main, my channel is mainly in Italian so I have even uh, I have um, both English and Italian videos so thank you once again for watching and uh, have a good day see you at the next video